Hey guys, welcome to the final part of the This Is Us series. Um, I'm really honored and excited to be sharing with you guys today. Come on, Freedom East Africa. And it's been such an amazing series, right? It's been so powerful, it's been so deep, it's been so practical as well. And a huge honor to everyone who has shared, everyone who's preached in this series, it has been so good. So today, we wanted to finish up this series by talking to and about singles and talking about singledom in the church as Christians. I know that here in East Africa, you know, we actually have many singles. We're blessed with lots of young single people. And uh, I really hope that this, this message will be relevant to you where you are right now, whether you're in Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda. I pray that this will be relevant, practical, helpful. And if you are not in that single category, then I believe this will still be relevant for you. So if you're married, if you're dating or whatever, don't switch off, okay? Because you can either learn from some of these points as well, or even be able to help support some of us single people. So let's jump in. I've actually got eight different points. Yes, eight, it's a lot, but we've got eight different points that I wanna share with you that I think will be helpful for us who are single, if you are on this journey of being a Christian single. So I'm just gonna jump right in because we've got a lot to get through. Um, so the first one is, don't compare your journey with others. Hmm. Don't compare your journey with others. Okay, so the number one thing, I, I am 30 now. I have been single for a while. Um, you know, I've had different relationships, but I've been, you know, I've, I've not yet married um, and I'm single currently. And one of the things that I always have, and my Christian friends, maybe family, who always tell me about how they met, how it worked for them, how they got together, you know, whether it was love at first sight or they just made the choice to really make it work, all these different things. And at first I wanted to hear these stories, but after a while I started to think, you know what? Some of this isn't helpful because it is different for everyone. The more stories I've heard over the years, there are many different marriages and couples that I really admire, that I look up to, that I love and their journey of how they got there, how they got married, how they met is completely different. And I just wanna say right now, you are unique. You are so unique. You know, if you look at your fingerprint, it is unique to every single person in the world that God has made you unique. Don't you think then that God has made your journey unique? You know, the plan he has for your life. And that even includes the person you're gonna marry and get with and how that's gonna to come to be. For some of you, it might be that big moment where it's love at first sight, you see each other across the room. For some of you, maybe it might be someone you've known for a long time and God starts to change your heart in that friendship or relationship. It's gonna be different for all of us. So the first thing you need to do is not compare your journey with others. It's great to get inspired by others. It's great to hear those romantic stories. Don't get me wrong, but you have to know that ultimately just because it happened for this person that way, it doesn't mean it's gonna happen for you that way as well. And I speak from experience because my mum and dad got married when they were very young, in their early 20s. My oldest brother then got married when he was in his early 20s. My grandparents also got married when they were in their early 20s. So me, I started thinking, you know, comparing my journey to theirs, I started thinking, yeah, I'm probably gonna be married when I'm, you know, in my early 20s, maybe 21, 22, start having kids at this age. And it was all because of what I had seen and I was comparing my journey with theirs but God spoke to me and said, no, I've got a different journey for you. I've got a different path for you and I'm writing a different story. So if you have friends and family, you know, maybe family members that are putting pressure on you because they're saying, you know, well, you know, by this time we were already together. Well, your story is different and that's okay. So don't be comparing. If you've got Christian friends who maybe got married early, don't compare. A lot of my friendship circle, you know, I'm good friends with, um, you know, a lot of my good friends have already gotten married at a young age. And I chose not to compare my journey and not to be jealous of other people's journeys, but to enjoy the journey that God has for me. So that first point, don't compare your journey with others. Again, it's good to be inspired by others, good to you know, hear those stories, but ultimately don't compare. Compare is the thief of joy, okay? It's the thief of joy. And if you compare your life, your journey, your situation, your relationship status with those around you, it will keep getting you down, okay? So the second point is pressure and expectation is a bad foundation 
for a relationship. Okay, let me say that again. Pressure and expectation is a bad foundation for a relationship. So we've been talking a lot in this series about parenting, about friendship, about, you know, the different influences that we have and the pressures and expectations from those different influences. And I know that here, you know, it's like um, sometimes in East Africa, you know, the, the kind of, um, I don't know, advice or input you can get from your family sometimes is, you know, don't date, don't date, don't date, focus on your studies, all this stuff. And then suddenly when you're at the right age, it's, why are you not married? <laughs> Where is your partner? Where are my grandchildren? <laughs> and you can end up having pressure and expectation from family that will push you into sometimes the wrong relationship. If you are making a decision to get with someone, to make a decision to marry someone because of the weight and pressure and expectation from family, relatives, friends, then you could end up in the relationship that God didn't want for you, but your family wanted for you. And then you might end up being in that relationship and it's gonna be hard. And I'm not saying God you know, can't you know, use that and you know, God still, his grace um, is good and everything and, and he can work things through and build on that. But you can end up being in a difficult relationship, maybe not the relationship that God had intended for you because you gave into weight and pressure. So like we've been saying in these last few weeks, let go of the pressure that your family are putting on you. You know, maybe they're saying it's time for you to get married. It's time for you to get married. Well, is that person the right person? Is that person the person that God wants you to marry or is it who your parents want you to marry? So I just want to say pressure and expectation is a bad foundation for a relationship. If you end up marrying someone because it was a practical thing to do or because it was expected of you, it probably will not be a healthy marriage okay so that's point number two we went deep hard guys okay who's ready for point three so the next point is get yourself ready get yourself ready if you're a single person right now you have an amazing opportunity right now to get yourself ready there are some things that you can do. There are some things you can work on. There are some things you can prepare for. I know a lot of my friends or family who I've spoken to who got married early on, you know, from afar, I was jealous and I was like, man, I wish I got married that young. A lot of them said, man, there were so many things we had to work through, which we wish we had worked through before when we were single. So you're not carrying baggage into that relationship. So what baggage do you need to deal with before you get into a relationship? What character trait do you want to work on before you get into a relationship? You know, and I'm not one of those people that's saying, you're not, you know, the reason you're not in a relationship is because you're not ready. You know, it's like, that's not fair to say that. But I do agree though, that if you are single, you have an amazing opportunity to still work on yourself and on your character and even practical things as well. You know, is there a, um, you know, is there a business venture that you want to, you know, chase or try or, you know, things you can get ready before you even get married, you know? But one of the main things that I really feel like bringing up in this point of get yourself ready is around lust and pornography, okay? And, you know, this isn't just for single people, this is for, you know, people who also are in relationship and all that stuff, because I know this is a very real addiction that we sometimes are scared to talk about, but we have to, especially as the church, we have to talk about this stuff. So get yourself ready. If you have a lust issue, if you have an addiction to pornography, it will not suddenly go away once you get married. It will not suddenly disappear once you get into a relationship. If this has been a habit in your life, then that habit doesn't suddenly disappear when you get married. And the enemy convinces many single people to, you know, hey, it's understandable. You know, you're not sleeping with anyone right now. You need those, you know, you have those desires, you have those urges, go for it. And when you're married, it won't be a problem. And the enemy feeds us these lies because then we get a habit in our lives, then we get married, and then you find out that you are still stuck in a porn addiction. And that can be even more damaging then if your significant other then finds out that you are actually looking at things behind their back. 
because then that, that brings, you know, damage to them and their self-image and am I not good enough? But actually it's because it's a habit and it's an addiction in your life that you need to break. So if you are single right now, and if you are struggling with lust or pornography, then I urge you, work on yourself, get free of that addiction, find freedom so that you leave that baggage at the door and you can go into your marriage pure, clean and free. So guys, it can be done. And I just wanna encourage you to really go after that. So if you're not sure how to do that, you know, then talk to one of your leaders, maybe talk to your tutor or your small group leader, whatever that looks like for you, but talk to someone if you wanna get free of that. Because this stuff, you need to confess it, speak it out, because the longer it stays in the dark, the longer the, it has power over you. But when you confess it and you talk about it, it takes the power away and you can work on it with other people. So get yourself ready for marriage. Point number four, have faith. Have faith. Have faith that God has someone for you. Like, you know, sometimes we at Freedom, you know, we talk about punching above our weight faith and, and we're like, yeah, I can, you know, maybe quit that job and believe that God's going to provide another way or I can, you know, believe for that thing or maybe for that house or that situation with my family. But then when it comes to relationship, we sometimes find it hard to believe that God really has someone who is right for us. We find that hard to have faith for sometimes. And I just wanna encourage you, if you are struggling with your faith level on this, if you've been in this This Is Us series and it's just you know, making you think about, oh yeah, I'm not in a relationship, but I need to, and the family pressure and all this stuff, have faith. Talking to you today, I wanna to just inspire and encourage and instill faith in you today. Have faith that God is in control, he hasn't forgotten about you, and he has the right person for you, okay? Because when we don't have faith, that's when we start taking matters into our own hands. And we, when we take matters into our own hands and we take the faith element out of it, that's when we can get into messy situations and relationships, okay? So have faith. You know, Jesus said many times to the disciples, he said, oh, you have little faith. If Jesus saw your faith in regards to your future relationship right now, would he say, wow, you've got punch in above your weight faith. I'm so proud of you, keep going. Or is he gonna say, come on, you have little faith, have more, believe, trust me. Why would I withhold something great from you? And I think sometimes we almost feel like God is out to trick us or we're gonna miss it or, you know, oh, what if I miss it or what if I, so I gotta make things happen. God loves you so much. He's not gonna like, he's not out to trick you and go, oh, you missed your opportunity. Well, that's that for you. <laughs> it's like he loves you and he gives good things to his children. So be patient and have faith. So being single, we, it's, it's hard. It's not easy. I, I, you know, I know how it is, um, but have faith. And I really believe that, you know, God just is so in love with a faith-filled person. When you are full of faith, he just loves it because you're believing in something that you cannot see. You know, it even says in Hebrews eleven six, it says we cannot please God without faith. Faith is part of our walk, our journey, even our salvation. So why do we sometimes struggle for it when it comes to our relationship? So I wanna inspire you today, have faith, okay? Now, point number five, have faith and take action. <laughs> so point four, have faith, point five, faith and action. Have faith, but take action. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna encourage some people. You know, we want some relationships and freedom, right? We want people to be married. We want you to be wise, wanting to seek counsel, all that kind of stuff, of course but we encourage relationships, you know? And, uh, and obviously if you're on Academy, you know, there's that rule where we say, you know, um, you know, no dating while you're on Academy because we want you to be sold out for God, really going after him for those nine months, really chasing after him with everything and not having those distractions or those thoughts. But for you, you know, if, if you have faith, if you have that faith element, well, you can't just have faith you need to also have action, okay? If you really like someone and you're just believing and praying about it, you're not doing anything, well, nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> and so, you know, even in James 2, 17, it talks about, you know, it says, 
Faith without action is dead. Faith without action is dead. We can't just be praying for this stuff. We can't just be believing for it and not doing anything. We've got to make sure that when the time is right, when that person is there, that we actually then take action. So if you're interested in someone, then why not um, just build a friendship with them? Get to know them more. Maybe even go for a coffee. I don't know. Go for a cheeky soda. But make sure that you're not just believing and closing your eyes and like, you know, yeah, you know, I'm just gonna just be totally pure and holy and ignore everyone till God drops the right person into my arms. You've got to still take action when the time is right. And the same vice versa with this, you can't have action without faith. If we are taking action because we're scared that God isn't providing, because we're worried that it's not gonna happen because the pressure is coming from family and so we just take action, that's wrong. And we have to have the faith part. So you see what I'm saying? You know, point number four comes first, have faith, but point number five, and take action if the time is right. Hope this is all making sense so far. Okay, so the next one, point six, it kind of ties in with point five, but it's be accountable. Be accountable. If you are at that place where you've had the faith, there is someone that you're interested in, a godly person who loves Jesus, then the next thing is, is talk to one of your leaders. Seek counsel. And here's the thing here, is sometimes we can end up talking to just our friends and or we talk to people who we know will cheer us on in it. And maybe we don't talk to our leaders because we wonder what they'll think or what they'll say. But the truth is, if you are keeping it secret and you're not telling your leaders about it, it probably means because deep down, you know it's probably not the right thing for you. It's probably not the healthiest relationship, right? But if you tell your leaders, if you speak to them, they're gonna give you wise counsel. You know, they are wanting to see you thrive, see you succeed. Like we said in Freedom Church, we want some healthy marriages, healthy families. We are there to support and love on you and help you and guide you. But we are gonna tell you if we really don't think this maybe is the right thing for you. We're gonna pray for you, we're gonna support you. And if it is the right thing, we're gonna cheer you on. We're gonna say, hey, how is that going? How did that coffee go? So have faith, but then take action. But you need to seek counsel before taking that action. Go talk to someone and uh, talk to a leader and make sure you're accountable. Because here's the thing, guys, if we start you know, messaging people, if we start going on dates with people and we haven't even told our leaders, we're not even being held accountable, then that can end up leading into some secret sin, some hidden sin. It can end up leading into things where no one knew about it and your leaders aren't there to support you. So your leaders are there for you. They want to support you. So if there is an interest there, seek counsel, let them chat it through with you, and I'm sure they'll be able to support you in that. So if you are hesitating to tell your leaders is probably because you know deep down maybe it's not the best thing for you. If it is a healthy relationship, you shouldn't have any concern or worry about telling your leaders and letting them keep you accountable and be praying for you in it. Okay, point number seven. Pray for your future partner, okay? Here's the thing, you have to not obsess about it. I know so many Christians who just are obsessed with meeting the one, praying about the one, all this stuff, and, and you know, I've got to meet them and all this stuff. And it consumes their thinking and it actually robs what God wants to do in the present. But at the same time, we need to have a balance. We can't just ignore it and be like, well, it'll just happen when it happens. What is actually really good is if you pray for your partner. Maybe you've met them already and you don't realize, or maybe it's someone you've never met and maybe they're somewhere else on the earth living their life. Pray for them today. Pray that they have a good day. Pray that God would move in their lives. Pray that God would bless them. God would be with them. Pray that God would be the center of their lives before you come to be in future. Pray for your future partner, even if you don't even know their name and their face yet, pray for them. And hopefully they're also praying for you on this journey. Okay, point number eight. Don't wait till you're married to start your life. I love this point. And this is why I'm finishing on this point. Don't wait till you're married to start your life. And you might be like, what? I, I am starting my life. But here's the thing, guys. You know, 
I think in church, a lot of the time, you know, I saw this growing up sometimes, that it was almost like singles weren't taken as seriously as married couples. I'm so grateful that we're in a church like Freedom where we value singles just as much as we value couples. I love that, you know, Freedom released me as a single pastor to come and start Freedom Kigali. I love that we have an incredible man of God as our pastor here in Freedom Kigali now, Flahant, who is not yet married, but God is using him in incredible ways. And imagine if he was sat on the bench waiting to meet the right person before God could use him. Hey, it would be such a shame because God wants to use you now. If you're a single person and you have believed the lie that you're not complete until you've met your person and then you can be used by God and then you can be taken seriously and then you can do ministry, that's a lie. If you're single right now, I wanna encourage you and say, God has an amazing plan for you right now in the present. Yes, in the future with your future spouse as well, but there is a plan for you right now. There is ministry that he wants you to help and lead in. There are things that he wants you to do. There are, you know, maybe a plan for you to go on, maybe something, a team for you to lead. You don't have to wait till you're married to start taking your life seriously. And that applies in church, but also in life. I mentioned earlier, maybe you can, you know, um, invest in uh, this idea or, you know, this thing, you know, may maybe it is a good time to invest or start a business or to try things. Because sometimes we think, okay, the first step is marriage and then I can start to do those things with my partner. But why not start taking some risks now when you're single as well, hey? Um, and I know for me, one of the things that um, really stood out for me is I had a, a, a prophetic word from Clem years ago. And, you know, for those of you who um, know Clem, he's a dear friend of uh, Freedom Church, an amazing guy who's so accurate with prophecy. And low key, everyone is always there thinking, Clem, Lord, you know, speak through Clem and, and talk to me about my future partner, my future marriage. When is it going to be? Give me the date. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, and for me, I remember having this word from Clem and he said, he was like, you know, and this was at a time where a lot of my close friends were getting married, things like that, meeting people. And I hadn't met anyone yet. And I'm like, Lord, this is my time. You know, Clem starts speaking a word. And partway through that word, he said, there is an extended time of singleness for you. <laughs> and I was gutted and I was like, okay, Lord, keep talking, keep talking. And he said, you know, the, and I remember this phrase now, this is what he said and it stuck with me all these years. He said, there are things that God can do when you're single that he can't do when you're married. There are things that he wants to do in your singleness that he can't do when you're married. And I think about the journey I've been on the last 10 years. I think about, you know, even the opportunity to go church plant in Cambodia, in India, in the UK, here as well. And honestly, guys, I know that if I was married, if I'd married in Hereford, I probably would have maybe settled, you know, I probably would have maybe stayed there. And, and I'm, I guess, you know, maybe I would have gone some of these places, but I would not have done what I've done over these last 10 years if I was not single, because I have had the freedom to be like, okay, God, where do you want me to go? Okay, great, you know, I'll go for it. Okay, God, what do you want me to do? Okay, great, I'm gonna go for it, because it's just, you know, that it's this thing of, you know, when you're married, you're there like, okay, got the wife, got the kids, are we able to do this? Are we able to financially go? How do you feel about it? And I'm not saying that stuff is bad, but there is an amazing freedom in our faith and what God is calling us to do that is very unique and rare when we're single. And we have to enjoy that. And I know that when I get married, when, I, when I'm with the right person, I know that we will continue adventuring into God adventures. I know that to be true, but I'm just using it, using it as an example of there are things right now, if you're single, there are things that God might be calling you to do that might not be as easy when you are married. So make sure you are living full and dying empty in your singleness and not waiting until you're married to really get started with, with your life. I mean, another thing we said as well the other week with the whole parenting session was about um, moving out. 
you know? Another way, this is such a great way that you can, you know, that point three, get yourself ready. Another way you can get yourself ready is by being independent because it grows maturity. It gets you ready for marriage. So I just wanna encourage you guys, don't wait till you're married necessarily to move out. Maybe it's time to move out of your parents. Maybe it's time to work on your character, to start, you know, paying bills, paying rent, so that when you're married, you know some of these things, that you are independent, you know? Some of you guys, you need to move out of home so you can learn to cook. So it's not your wife who's cooking for you all the time, but sometimes you can treat her to a meal and she is gonna be very grateful. <laughs> Come on, ladies, I'm sure you agree, but you know, it's very nice if your man's gonna cook you some good food, hey? So guys, let's not wait till we're married to really start living our potential to the full, okay? Don't wait till you're married to really start to walk into the calling that God has for you. If you're still single right now, maybe it's because God wants to do something in you right now. So that's it from me. I mean, I have a few little tips here, okay? These aren't the main points, but a few little tips that I just wanted to kind of bring as well. Okay, number one, don't be putting so-and-so with so-and-so, okay? Don't be egging people on. You know, one thing that I've realized and noticed can actually be quite damaging is if people are teasing people about, oh, how about so-and-so? And have you thought about so-and-so? And because if that person doesn't feel the same way, well, you just encourage this person to feel a certain way about that person and they didn't feel that way about them and you just kind of stirred and caused a bit of a problem, okay? So unless you are very close friends and you're having a mature conversation about it, let's not be teasing who should be with who and let's ship this person with that person. Guys, it can actually be quite damaging and it's also unfair as a single person I don't appreciate it when people start talking about who I should be with and who I should get with. So let's be mature and not be shipping people with different people and really making sure that we are a church that's so mature about this stuff that if someone is trying to date someone, someone's trying to get to know someone, someone's talking to someone, that we're not there going, oh my gosh, did you see so-and-so? And oh my God. It's like, let them work it out themselves, okay? And if you're, a, you know, if you're a close friend to that person, of course, that's very different. You know, you can share and talk about that, but let's not be, you know, because it can almost become a little bit gossipy or immature and it's not always helpful, you know, for singles because then they're awkward about talking to anyone in case everyone talks about it. Another little tip, don't be messaging or meeting with people one-on-one -on -one of the opposite sex if you are not interested in taking it further, okay? Because, you know, if you're becoming very close friends with someone of the opposite sex, you're messaging all the time, you go out for coffee all the time, you go out for dinner all the time, well, one of you might get the impression that the other is interested. If you are interested, that's different. And like I said, be accountable, let someone know if you're interested and you're starting to test the water. But if you're not interested, don't mislead someone. Don't end up, you know, spending all your time with one person of the opposite sex. Of course, in a friendship group, yes, hang out with each other, please. Be friends, of course. Be friends with people of the opposite sex. But if you are continually hanging out with that same person who is also single and of the opposite sex, it's gonna send messages out to that person and also to people around. So be wise about that. If you're messaging, if you're meeting with all the time, then really that is a date, okay? So let's just make sure we're being wise and that we're not misleading people. Okay, one phrase that we, uh, that I've heard before is try on the dress, okay? I mean, I'm a guy, I don't wear dresses, but try on the dress. If, if for girls, if you're to go to a shop and you see a nice dress, well, you don't just buy it, you know, you try it on and you see, does it fit? Does it look good? Does it, you know, fit well? Is this right? And then you, you know, you then, commit to it later on. And this phrase basically is around this whole thing of dating. At Freedom, we encourage dating. You know, you're not gonna, you can't go from being single to suddenly being married because you need to see first, does the dress fit? Does this relationship work? Do we have a connection? Do we have a friendship? Okay. So I encourage you, try on the dress. You know, if there's someone that you may be interested in and you're not currently on Academy, then be accountable. But why not test the waters? Try on the dress. But going back to this other point, 
it's really hard to try on the dress when everyone is staring at you. <laughs> when you're trying to see, oh my gosh, does this fit? Does it not? How do we feel? Are we comfortable? Are we not? It's really hard then if everyone's like, and staring that person out, you know? So if people, we wanna have a culture and freedom where people are so mature about this relationship stuff that if someone is interested in someone, if someone's going for coffee, that you don't then talk about it and, you know, be annoying or stare all this stuff, but you just let them try on the dress. If it works, awesome. If it doesn't, well, at least they tried and, you know, maybe it's not the right thing and they've been accountable, okay. The last thing I just want to say as well is ultimately for a relationship, what you should be looking for is friendship, which is why we say try on the dress, go for coffee, build a friendship. Because the truth is, you know, yeah, you want that chemistry, you want that attraction, you know, you want all those things. But ultimately, you want to have a friend that you're going to have for the rest of your life, that you're going to journey with God together. You're going to go and do amazing things in God's name. You're going to go on great adventures. You're going to go on, uh, you're going to raise great kids, send out those arrows like we talked about. And that all needs to be done with your best friend, okay? Don't give in to things like materialism or attraction. And yes, attraction needs to be there. I totally agree. But that cannot be the number one reason that you get with someone. It needs to be because they love Jesus and because there is a deep friendship and connection between you. So guys, I hope this has helped. I know there's a lot of me talking, a lot of information there, but I really hope that that helps for us singles. But I just want to pray for us to finish. And I want to pray around this final point, the whole thing about don't wait till you're married to start your life, that God wants to use you right now. I believe that firmly. So I'm going to pray for you right now and just ask that everyone right now just close their eyes and receive this. And especially if you're single, let this really touch your heart in this moment. Okay, God, I thank you so much, God, that we are in a church that releases singles, that believes in singles, God, that does not look down on people because they're young or because they're single. And God, I pray, Lord, right now, God, where maybe some singles watching online right now or maybe in the room where they are, God, where they have written themselves off, God, and they're kind of put themselves on the bench, put themselves on the shelf to say, I will, uh, I guess I'll just wait till I'm married until God can use me. I'll wait till I'm married till I can really get on with my life. I'll, I'll wait till I'm married till I can really jump into that vision that God has put on my heart. And I pray right now, God, I pray, Lord, that you would bless every single person right now, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, would you really set their heart on fire, God? Lord, would you bring them to the reality, God, that you have so much more for them in this season, God, than maybe we've accepted? So I pray, God, for an LFDE, heart upon every single and upon every couple and marriage and family, God. I pray, Lord, that we would all have LFDE hearts, God, that we would go after what you are calling us to, Father. So, Lord, we love you. And I pray, God, I pray, God, for, um, you know, great, strong marriages and future, God. I pray, Lord, for marriages that would say yes to your calling. I pray for marriages that, you know, you're at the center of God and that where there's purity, God, where people are free from any other addiction or past, God. Lord, that there would be healthy marriages, healthy families in Freedom Church, East Africa, God. Lord, would you do an amazing work in all of us, God. So Father, we thank you for this series, God. And I pray that we would leave this place changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So guys, if there's any point there that you like weren't sure about or you've got more questions on, talk to us. We want to talk. This whole thing is to help you find a healthy relationship with God in the center that you're going to be able to live the rest of your days um, in the fullness that God has for you. So guys, we love you. We're so proud of you. And you singles, you're amazing. Keep going. Keep believing. God has someone so special for you. Don't give up. We love you. Bye.